Now I can finally put the entire week together to solve integrals of rational functions. This is the process. I first look to see if the fraction is proper. If not, I use polynomial long division to make it proper. The quotient pieces are just polynomials, and those pieces I already know how to integrate. Then I factor the denominator if it isn't already factored. I need a factor form to make use of the partial fraction technique. So then I use partial fractions to break up the rational function into various pieces. Then the integral will break up using linearity over the partial fraction pieces. After some algebraic manipulation, these integrals will all work out to be one of the four types I covered back in the very first video for this week. So I have reduced any complicated rational function into one of these four original integrals, which I already know how to do. And after all that is done, I'll have completed the integral. That's pretty heavy and complicated, so let's get into examples. I'll do examples where I've already done the partial fractions earlier in the week. Go back to those videos or the examples written out in the notes to remind you how the partial fraction decomposition worked. I calculated this partial fraction decomposition in video 3 for this week. Therefore, if I want to integrate this rational function, I can break up the integral into two pieces, one for each of the smaller fractions. I can pull out the constants. The resulting integrals are 1 over a linear term, and as I discussed in the first video for this week, the antiderivatives of these are logarithms. I can add the constant of integration to produce this total antiderivative. Partial fractions, by breaking up the rational function into pieces, has allowed me to successfully integrate this rational function. This was the second partial fraction, pa partial fraction example in the third video. So if I integrate this rational function, I can split the integral up using linearity into three integrals. I pull out the constants again, and again I just have integrals of 1 over a linear term. These are all logarithm integrals, so I get these three results, plus of course the constant of integration, to produce the complete antiderivative of the original rational function. This was the first example in the fourth video for the week, the example that had an irreducible quadratic term. The integral is going to break up into two pieces, and the first piece I already know how to do, it's just another linear integral as before. However, the quadratic piece needs a bit more attention. I had two integral types with quadratic denominators in the first video for this week, and I'm going to do some algebra with this integral to turn it into two pieces, one for each of those types. The first type of integral with a quadratic denominator was a type that had the derivative of the denominator precisely in the numerator. The derivative of this denominator is 2x minus 2. Therefore, the first thing I have to do is somehow get 2x minus 2 in the numerator of this function. The numerator is currently 3x over 2 minus 1 half, which doesn't look anything like 2x minus 2. So how do I do this? Well, there are some very clever algebra tricks that I use. All of them are some version of multiplying and then dividing by the same thing, or adding and subtracting the same thing. All of these leave the value of the terms the same, but they let me write them in a particular form. So first, I want 2x, but I have 3 over 2x. Well, I can write 3 over 2 times x as 3 over 4 times 2x. I've multiplied by 2 and divided by 2, which changes nothing, but it does get a 2x here, which is good. However, I can't remove this 3 quarters since it is not a factor of the entire numerator. How do I make it a factor of the entire numerator? Well, I use the same trick. I take the negative 1, and I multiply and divide by 3 quarters. Again, this doesn't change the value, but now I can factor out 3 quarters from the entire numerator. The second term that remains is negative 4 thirds times 1 half, which simplifies to negative 2 thirds. All right, now I've done half the work. The first part of the numerator is 2x, which matches the derivative that I want. But now I need 2x minus 2. How do I get the negative 2 piece? Well, I add and subtract negative 2 to the numerator. Well, then I group the additions differently, putting the 2x minus 2 together and writing 2 minus 2 thirds as 4 thirds. So now I actually have the 2x minus 2 that I wanted in the numerator. 
From this point, I split the numerator up into two pieces, one with the piece that matched the derivative I want, 2x minus 2, and another with the remaining constant. This was a success. With a bunch of tricky algebra, I made something into the form I wanted. The numerator is exactly the derivative of the denominator. From the first video, the result of this integral is a logarithm of the absolute value of the denominator. All right, that's progress, but I'm not done. I've done one of the two pieces, but there is still another piece. The other piece has a constant in the numerator, but I can pull that constant out. In this particular case, pulling that three quarters out cancels off with the four thirds when I pull it out. This is not guaranteed to happen in general. These terms may not cancel off perfectly, um, but I do still pull that constant out of the numerator. Then I have a one in the numerator. The second quadratic type from the first video this week also had a one in the numerator, so this is good. But that type was written in vertex form in the denominator. So I need to complete the square in the denominator, and doing that produces the vertex form, x minus 1 squared plus 2. Then I can use the second type, with alpha equal 1 and beta equal square root 2. Remember that the term in the bracket was x minus alpha, and then after that was beta squared, so the 2 in this case must be beta squared, which means that beta must be the square root of 2. Well, then I have alpha and beta, and I just use that integral form from the first video. The result is 1 over root 2 times the arctangent of x minus 1 over root 2. All right, let me sum up. Here was the original rational function, which split up into partial fractions and therefore two integrals. The first is a linear denominator with a logarithm antiderivative. All the hard algebra I did for the second part produced two terms, another logarithm and an arctangent. This is what I expect from irreducible quadratics. I'll manipulate the numerator using these tricks, break it up into two pieces, and make the two pieces match the patterns from the first video to get a logarithm and an arctangent. It's complicated and it's a lot of work, but it is consistent and will always lead to the same kind of results. Finally, here is the last partial fraction example from, week, from the fourth video from this week. What happens if I try to integrate this? Well, the integral splits up by linearity into three integrals. The first two are logarithm integrals. However, the second has a higher power of the linear factor in the denominator, and this was the fourth and final type from the first video. The antiderivative from that first video of 1 over x plus 2 squared is negative 1 over x plus 2. That's the last term, so now I get a complete antiderivative of this rational function. This completes the overview of the technique. There's a lot going on here, many steps to the calculations, lots to keep track of, many algebraic tricks, but it all fits together very nicely to actually solve these integrals.